Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel. Hey Jim, we're putting Week 11 in the books. We're moving on to Thanksgiving DFS stacks. What's going on, man? I mean, it's hard to be bad when we have Thanksgiving just around the corner. It's not because of the food, not because of visiting families via Zoom and stuff like that. It's because this is one of the best days for DFS the entire year, a three-game slate. So the options are always kind of slim, but it also just means we can narrow down our player pool and have some fun. So I'm excited. This is a, this is always a great day for DFS. How are you doing, Greg? I'm doing really well. I'm excited to get to Thanksgiving. I'm excited uh, to eat that turkey, and I'm excited to, to watch some football hang out. Uh, and hopefully uh, enjoy a fun, long weekend. So let's begin here, Jim, with I, I imagine this is going to be the, the top game that people are going to be stacking, right? And, and that's Houston and Detroit. We'll start with Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller. Deshaun Watson was awesome yesterday against the New England Patriots. Watson put up the type of game that we thought we were going to get all season. It had not happened. But as you look at the schedule for Thursday and you're trying to figure out where you want to get your players from, Deshaun Watson's like the number one guy that I want in there. And, of course, pairing him up with Will Fuller, who's just a touchdown maker, it makes all the sense in the world. To me, like I said, when I looked at the slate, the obvious spot to go in. Yeah, and I think that that's key because, like, the reason you could be concerned about Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller is salary because they're definitely both going to be on the higher end of things. But they're also on the higher end of things because there just aren't a lot of studs to choose from on Thanksgiving, which means we're going to have a lot of lower and mid-range salary guys, which should make it easier to afford Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller. The reason we've talked about Brandon Cooks a lot here on the Hurry Up this year is because his salary is lower than Will Fuller, and he does have a really good role in this offense. But if we're looking at we can just choose anyone, I'm going to take Will Fuller first. He has had a tremendous floor this entire season. And we also know that the, that big Will Fuller explosion game is still very much within his range of outcomes. It is still lurking there, even if it hasn't quite showed up so far this year. So I would say that, like, it's kind of a no-brainer. This is where you want to start your lineup with Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller. Maybe you throw Brandon Cooks in there, too, and kind of soak up all the goodness in this Houston offense, all the high leverage targets, Randall Cobb and Kenny Stills aren't going to play here. So potentially even more looks going to Will Fuller and Randall Cobb. Hopefully the Lions can keep pace because it didn't look pretty on Sunday for them by any means. We need them to score to keep the foot on the gas pedal here for Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller. But being at home should help the Lions a bit. So I think we can have a lot of faith in Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller. And again, we should be able to get to their salaries as well. It's amazing when Will Fuller is the last wide receiver standing here, when Will Fuller is the healthy wide receiver for Houston. We saw Kiki QT get a touchdown yesterday, and Deshaun Watson being able to work the ball around against the England Patriots defense gives me confidence against this Detroit defense. And as you mentioned, hopefully Detroit can keep it close to Deshaun Watson will continue to have to just pass and score points for us on Thursday. But Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller, lock them into your lineups on Thanksgiving. Up next for us, we move to Thursday night football. It is really the game of the day, right? The rivalry matchup between Pittsburgh and Baltimore, a Ravens team that has struggled, specifically struggling, Lamar Jackson, who just has not seemed like the same quarterback as last year, the MVP quarterback from last year. But he has a chance to really redeem himself here against their arch rivals, the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if anything, on Sunday was J.K. Dobbins' coming out party. Mark Ingram was an afterthought. Uh, Gus Edwards didn't do much. It was really all about J.K. Dobbins. Well, now against Pittsburgh again, an opportunity for him to step up. You feel good stacking Lamar and J.K. Dobbins here on Thursday night. How come? I think it's because it's a thing we've talked about a couple of times here, Greg, where we can use these two players and soak up almost every yard the Ravens accumulate. Because, yeah, on Sunday, J.K. Dobbins' snap rate was still just 45%. That's not ideal, but he had 15 carries, while Gus Edwards and Mark Ingram combined for just five. And that's what we can stack in here with Lamar Jackson. Almost every play will involve points for either Lamar Jackson or J.K. Dobbins. In that game on Sunday, they had all but eight of the team's offensive yards. And that's really key in a game that should be pretty tight throughout. Should feature some points. It's a tough matchup for the Ravens. It is a repeat divisional matchup against a really good defense. But I still think they will be able to move the ball here in what should be a good real-life game, which can often translate into a good DFS game as well. We saw J.K. Dobbins run pretty well against this Pittsburgh team back in... Week number eight, he had 113 yards on 15 carries. There was no Mark Ingram in that game, but 
Ingram, like you said, didn't really do a whole lot on Sunday either. So I think we can actually look at that game and see, okay, Dobbins was able to move the ball on the ground for this Ravens team. Now he's got a bigger share of this offense. It seems like he has the faith and the confidence of the coaching staff here in what is effectively a must-win game for this Ravens team. I would view Dobbins similar to how we viewed Antonio Gibson this year, where he's a guy... The floor may not be that great if he does not score. However, he now has a path to a ceiling because he is good and he can rack up points in a big way with the volume that he does get. So I would say Lamar Jackson, J.K. Dobbins, yes, it is a tough matchup, but we should have a good amount of faith in them right now. So I'm going to stack them together and soak up every single yard the Ravens get on Thursday night. A real-life game being close and being good very well could produce fantasy points. In fact, in their press conference earlier today, Ben Roethlisberger was saying, hey, we know this. We know we need to score more. And despite winning uh, by quite a bit on Sunday against Jacksonville, the Steelers know that if they're going to beat the better teams in the league, they're going to have to put up points. Well, if they put up points, that means Lamar Jackson and the Ravens are going to have to do the same on the other side. And a whole lot of scoring means a whole lot of points for us in DFS. J.K. Dobbins, you said a couple of weeks ago his stock was rising because, well, he's good. And... Yesterday, I believe, was the start of that. J.K. Dobbins and Lamar Jackson could be in store for a big game on Thanksgiving. Now, you mentioned Antonio Gibson there, and I love a teaser. I always love a good teaser here, Jim. And we wrap up today's DFS stacks by talking about Antonio Gibson and pairing them with a Washington football team defense. Facing off against Andy Dalton and the Dallas Cowboys, the defense, led by Chase Young, looked good, of course, against Joe Burrow, or for a little while Joe Burrow, then Ryan Finley in Cincinnati yesterday, and now they get a chance to go after Andy Dalton and Dallas. And pairing it up with, with Antonio Gibson makes me think that you, you have a feeling that Washington's going to play this one and, well, be ahead for a lot of the game. I think there's at least a chance for that. And the reason is that we did see the Cowboys offense come to life on Sunday. But it's important to remember that was against a Vikings team that does not generate a pass rush. They entered week 11 ranked 27th in pressure rate defensively, whereas Washington is in the top 10 in that stat. And yes, the, the Cowboys offensive line is healthier than it was the first time these two teams face each other. But in that game, the Cowboys offense did absolutely nothing. Now they do go home. And as I said, their offensive line is healthier. That is a good thing for this Dallas offense, but they're still going to get pressure on Dalton. This offensive line is not suddenly good. They're just less bad than what they were before. And if Washington does get a lead, that's great for Antonio Gibson because in that game on Sunday, they had a lead the entire time. Gibson snap rate, 53%. He had 16 carries in that game, and he now has 13 or more carries in three of their past four games. Another key here for Antonio Gibson is that if the Washington defense gives them the offense a short field, it's going to be Gibson getting the ball because in – from week two on, inside the red zone, Gibson has 23 rush attempts compared to eight for J.D. McKissick, just three for Peyton Barber in that time. He has 12 of 16 running back rush attempts inside the 10. He has 10 of 13 inside the five. So Antonio Gibson is the goal line back for the Washington football team, which means that his, his, his crazy scoring pace that he's on is not all that crazy because he's just getting good opportunities. We know that there's still some shakiness in the role because, again, if he does not score – Things can go south in a hurry, but he gets goal line touches. He gets enough carries and enough targets to have a good ceiling here. So I think that Antonio Gibson is a pretty solid play for this slate. You know, there are no surefire running backs here. I know that Zeke is on the slate, uh, but like there are no surefire running backs on this Thanksgiving slate. So Antonio Gibson is going to be a focal point for sure on Thursday. And if they get a lead, it's going to benefit both him and this defense. So I want to pair them together and see what happens and see if that defensive line can give Andy Dalton some trouble once again. Yeah, looking at the running backs on the slate, without we suspect DeAndre Swift available for us for Detroit. Ezekiel Elliott's there, but Antonio Gibson has proven reliable. And yes, he is touchdown dependent to a degree because J.D. McKissick does soak up so many of those receptions. But Antonio Gibson does it all. And looking at what you have to do on this slate, Gibson seems the same as his price is fair enough for us to be able to go out and get Deshaun Watson and Will Fuller, which I think, again, is the most important part of this slate. The Washington defense, well, they're as good a choice as any, especially with their ability to get to the quarterback, as we've seen often this season. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, we appreciate the time. Good luck on Thursday. Thank you, Greg. Same to you, and good luck on the main slate, too, because we're not talking this Friday. So I got to wish you good luck now on Monday, even though it's so far in the future, but good luck on both those slates. Uh, and have a good week to you next week as well. 
Appreciate it, Jim. I'm not going to talk to you for a while, I just realized, which means I'll have to text you, I'll have to watch you with JJ, with all of the other uh, stuff you have going on. You have a lot of streams, so I'll be able to catch you, I'm sure. Tomorrow, Tom Vecchio will join me as we talk about the top stars on the board for the full Week 12 slate coming up this weekend. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Thank you so much for watching. Enjoy Thanksgiving Day football, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.